Welcome everybody, my name is Richard, this is my colleague Serge and we're on a road trip today down to Cornwall to buy a car and we're going to use our own high mileage Model 3 that we call Mars because he has children of 16,460 miles on it at the moment. So this is a really good opportunity to test real world range capability, efficiency and probably some charging speed as well uh, just as we use this car for our daily work today. It is uh, quite a cold morning, it's very foggy outside as well. Uh, it was one, two degrees earlier, it's come up to four degrees now as it's got light. We've already been on the road for, uh, well, we drive to over an hour now, so it's just got light. And uh, you can see the fog here. Uh, so, let me just see that. Yes, rather gloomy out there as we're coming around Dorchester at the moment. So, a very much a real world test. I'll see heating's on, we're just going to drive at speed limits, not going to try and hype them up. But the range in this car still seems to be very good. We have done another video testing the battery and all the other maintenance aspects. And it shows we've got about 88% of its original 100% battery capacity available to us. So still good capable range. And we're probably going to show that today, we hope, by doing a three, 400 mile day in this car. We still use this car every day and we're putting the miles on it. However, it looks like we're making the number one stop, which is to <laughs> McDonald's to grab a breakfast. So uh, we'll do that first, but we'll just log throughout the day what we're getting from real world efficiency um, and range in such cold conditions, which obviously are going to be the best for getting the most miles out of the car. But we should be able to show that even a high mileage tester is still good for covering plenty of mileage. Uh, it's also our first test today with some new tyres on this car. When we've picked up this car, it had some winter tyres, some budget winters. Um, it still actually performed quite well for efficiency for that, but uh, we've now got some Hankook uh, cross climate tyres, so all season. Flex. Uh, flex climate, thank you, sir. Uh, Hankook Ion Flex Climate. I'll probably do another video about these tyres um, once we've tested them a bit more um, but that's what this car is on for this test and in fact as we've come up for breakfast now I can show you we've got these tyres on here these flex climates uh, thank you I have flex climates they're nice and quiet on the road actually do just notice in there they're brand new they went on yesterday so it's the first trip with them uh, that's uh, yeah rather cold foggy morning so doesn't it anyway that over there is McDonald's Dorchester as the first start on our road trip just coming into Plymouth now and we're gonna go across the salt ash but we're just coming into Plymouth and crucially we've just hit 50% battery so we've used half the battery we left at 100% it wasn't quite finished charging actually was it so it was still trickling the last bit here but it was set at 100% and we have covered 137 miles so 140 miles so pro rata that out 280 miles of range based on the fact we used 50% to do nearly 140 miles so I think that's okay considering it was one degree when we left, the conditions haven't been optimal. There's the work into Plymouth sign. So we can tell you now you can drive from the uh, Bournemouth area to Plymouth using 50% of the battery. So in theory, we could actually probably just about make it back. In reality, what we'll probably do is stop and charge and see how charging speeds are. Average efficiency since charge 242 watt hours per mile. Uh, so a bit over four miles per kilowatt hour, I think that's reasonable. And we've now done over a thousand miles in this car uh, since we've had it. We've been on the road for a week. Uh, so 216,552 miles now and still going. So we're just about to leave uh, Plymouth or Saltash, just in the Cornwall side of the river. And um, I've got 47% battery. And as I navigate back towards work, it is suggesting a stop at Exeter Services where there's tons of chargers there. And it's going to estimate we arrived there at 24%. Um, now, that's my efficiency since we charged 236. It, it will precondition for charging, which will use energy. So the efficiency from now on will be distorted by preheating. Now, interestingly, Surge is in a Tesla Model 3 Performance 2022. Although that will have a cold battery because we've only just pulled it out of the garage after buying it. Um, low mileage car. And you've got 60% now, and you're going to arrive with how much? 30 so that's predicting that you're going to use quite a lot more energy to get there than I will. 
because I've got 47 with a rise with 24 so yeah anyway maybe if we get there with similar states of charge we can see some comparative charging speeds from the old girl with plenty of miles in it compared to the newer much lower mileage car with 5,000 miles in it it's probably not really a true comparison I don't know but that's what we're doing so we'll film what we do one extra thing before I go I, I was just going to show you if I remove all charging stops so just traveling back to work um it would I'd actually almost do it, it says I'd only get there with like minus 1%, so I'm very, very close to be able to just drive straight back to work. And then that would be very near 300 miles in total because we've already covered 150 miles, it's 140 miles back, so that'd be 290 miles, which basically this car can do even in this colder weather. Well, it's warmed up now, 11 degrees. I reckon I can make that happen. The reality is though, uh, we both want to stop, grab some food, uh, you know, go to the toilet, stuff like that. So we're going to just swing to extra services for a few minutes anyway. All right, you ready, Serge? Okay, we're going to go. services uh tons of chargers uh both tesla and non-tesla uh so that was uh, we've done 195 miles since this morning uh still a quarter of the battery left to be fair obviously the efficiency on that bit 322 is because it's preheating for charging i don't know how much difference that really makes it'd be interesting to do a video one day but um what i think we'll do is both top up to 90 percent and then when we leave here we're going to have the same amount. I actually get free supercharging, so we must stop it up. We want to go and eat anyway. We're ready for that. Charge to 90%? Yeah. What have you got now? 35. You got 35%. I've got 24%. Hey. Uh, but Thank you, YouTube videos. I found my Tesla because of you. Oh, good stuff. We're filming now. <laughs> okay, let's plug it in. First, what, what was your efficiency on that one? Quite high. 364. Yeah, 322 with the preheating the whole yeah. time. Well, charge to 90%. If we both got 90% when we leave here, it'd be interesting to see if this uses more battery. This would be more efficient, yeah. but this is an older battery compared to a 2022 Model 3 Performance with only 5,000 miles in it. Um, anyway, let's plug it in. Let's see what we got. As you can see, there's tons of chargers here. Uh, had a nice chap come and say hello just now. I'll go see in a minute. Oh, right, let's plug it in. So, pull the flap open. In that, there we go. And I think. Wait, should it be a green to charge? Oh, well. Uh, so, let's go see what we got. Is it ramped up? But yeah, let's look at plenty of charges. Anyone who says there's no charging facility is incorrect. Oh, all right, so let's go and uh, see what we got. What are you doing? <laughs> Say hello. He's ramping up to. 100 and, so 24 percent 160 kilowatts 162 so it's adding over 700 miles an hour 165 what have you got Serge? 136 136 now i've got 170 kilowatts at 24 percent but you're at what state of charge now 35 35 percent and you're charging at what speed 141 now 141 so at 35 percent will this be charging at more than 141 no I mean, this at the first state of charge on 75 kilowatts is absolutely fine, isn't it? My speed is going up still. So my speed is off that 170. I've got no doubt if this was down to sort of 10%, you could be probably doing 250 kilowatts. It can do 250. We've covered 200 miles of driving today, so we're both ready for a stop. We'll grab some food and lunch and stuff like that. Uh, we'll let it go. We're going to go to 90%. You set your charge into 90%? Yeah. Uh, right, I'm on 82%. Let's have a look on the other car then. Let's see where that's at. Because I had 11% less battery. I had 24% here, 35% when we stopped and plugged in. And that car's got 5,000 miles. Same battery pack. Uh, let's have a look. So he's on 85%. Charged at 37 kilowatts now. I'm at 38. So even though I was 11% 11, uh, 11 down when we plugged in, the gap in timing difference is very little so quite happy to say that even after 216,610 miles the charging speed on this 
is absolutely fine. Uh, we have done another video to show how much DC charging this car has had and how healthy the battery is. So if you're thinking that right now and you haven't seen the other videos, the previous videos of this car, then just jump back and watch that and we go through battery testing and uh, how much DC charging versus AC charging versus regen charging this car's ever had and what maintenance is needed. Uh, right, we'll get ourselves organised and go. I think though, what we might just do is just, uh, we've got seven minutes, so just for the purpose of video, I think we'll wait seven minutes. Both leave here with 90%. And then we'll see what we've got when we get back. So driven at the same speed, at the same time, same roads. Best way to get a comparison. This should be more efficient, but then this battery has got some degradation. That's a 5,000 uh, 5, mile car, but it's a performance, so it'd be less efficient. So we'll be able to gauge which car goes the furthest, you know, i.e. when we get back to our office, which car's got the most percentage of battery. So uh, we'll be off in a couple of minutes, both with 90%. I tell you what, it's warmed up today. It's now 13 degrees. It was one degree this morning. So there's a two minute difference in charging time in the end. Uh, I started with 11% less, so uh, that's all pretty reasonable, I think. Okay, let's exit from here. And so you've got no way, that's <laughs> I mean, just look at the amount of chargers here. It's great, isn't it? There. Right, okay. And set the road back to the office, both leaving with exactly 90%. I've just got some 65% as we travel back now, so that means I've used 25% since we left. And I've done 75 miles, so therefore, quarter 75 miles, 50% would be up with 50, four out of four would be 300 miles. So now it's a bit warmer, it's showing 30 degrees. Mm -hmm. It's certainly a 300 mile capable car. I've averaged 222 one hour a mile, it's pretty good. This section's lost kind of country roads, 47 50 miles an hour, so it's fairly efficient. Weather's good. It's a 300 mile car, but the weather's just a little bit warmer. Okay, so here we are back at work. Um, so this is impressive actually. Uh, well, the car's impressive. So now it's got 216,705 miles in it after that trip today. And um, that car's great, as I keep saying. But have a look at its efficiency. So I'll take this down and show you now. Uh, we're going to stop there. So we did 95 miles on that leg of the journey. But look at the efficiency, 215 miles per mile, that's nearly five miles per kilowatt hour. 59% uh, of the battery remaining, they're left at 90, so that used 31%, less than a third, to do 95 miles. So, pro rata that out, that means that's over 300 miles of range. This car can still do over 300 miles of range, even though it's got 216,705 miles. So, um, that's perfectly good. Charge is just the same as a newer car with, uh, well, the, the other car, the white Model 3 Performance, and by the way, I'll explain why Surge isn't here yet, it should be any second. Uh, that's just a couple of months newer, same battery though, uh, but with 5,000 miles, so that's why it's quite interesting to see the charging. Well, this caught up, I mean, as the charge rate got slower on the other car, this one caught up and they got there at the same time. So it charges well, drives well, is still very efficient, still does 300 miles of range, and that's what we've proven today. What we've also, because of the, um, what we've also been able to see, because of the change in temperature today, is we can really see a difference between the cold start. So this morning it was one degree. It had about 20 minutes of preheating, so it was a bit of preheating to warm it up a bit, but it was still, you know, we could have done more. Uh, but that means on a cold morning, you can do about 280 miles worth of range. And on a warmer day, like now, it's only 12 degrees. It's not exactly balmy, but I can feel it's air conditioning blowing rather than heating. That means we can do over 300. 
300 miles of range. Uh, this is a heat pump car, remember, it's a uh, very late 2021, so it's well into heat pump territory. But nonetheless, that's the difference it makes when you've got the heater going to keep the cabin warm versus air conditioning to keep the cabin cool. So real world driving conditions. Now, why is Surge not here yet? Well, this is weird, about 20 miles out. So for us, uh, we were just coming into sort of the, the Bournemouth and Paul area. Serge's car, though he was about 200 metres behind me on the road, took him on a completely different nav direction. Suddenly we couldn't see each other. And I said, yeah, we spoke on the phone. I said, where are you? So his nav took him completely a different route for these last few miles. And he's not here yet. <laughs> so we've got the same nav settings. We were literally 200 metres apart on the road, and yet it's taken him a different direction. The only thing we can think of that would explain that is that his car is rising chip and this car is early, so it's Intel. So, does that mean the Ryzen isn't as smart as this one? Because that car's a couple of months newer, it's got that Ryzen chip. Now here he comes, so that's the difference. What was that, about three minutes? Let's see out of interest how this other car compares. So a couple of months newer, same battery, uh, but it's a performance, and it's only got 5,000 miles, so it would have a pretty prime battery on this. I, my guess would be about 95%. Uh, uh, right, hang on, let me go on that. I'll see where it's gone off. I was going to come back. Right. What have you got, Serge? I've got 59% of the battery. 56. And my efficiency was like 2... two oh, I can't remember now. 215 or something. 250. So you're 4 miles per kilowatt hour. I'm on 215, which is nearly 5 miles per kilowatt hour. Probably yeah. 4.85 or something like that, probably. My maths in my head is right. So... I mean, still, you know, I so see you've done more miles. This is your nav difference, though. So I've done yeah. 95 miles so, on four more miles. And I use 31%. You've done 100 miles on 34%. It goes to show that both these cars, actually, with their journeys, is 300 miles. Yeah. You've used just over a third. I've used a bit under a third. Uh, but, yeah, they still do 300 miles each. Um, right, well, that's about that then, really. Uh, here we go. It's got a bit dirty now. I've miles here, just going to crack up a bit of salt on the road this morning. Uh, but, wow, look at the dirt on the back. Uh, it's going to be due a wash soon. So, I hope that video was uh, interesting and useful. Uh, another kind of real world insight into the capabilities of Mars, our high mileage car. We're just going to keep racking up the Mars doing days like this. Right, now time to get into the office. But I hope that was useful. Thank you for watching. Hope you're subscribed, and we'll see you in another video very soon.